Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. This particular topic is one that people can get a little touchy about. So I'm going to warn you right up front that you will be interfered with at some point and you may end up interfering with someone else at one point. You've got to remember this is just a hobby. If somebody's giving you a hard time just uh, try some other time, try some other band, uh, something like that, or another frequency. It does happen. Uh, there have been instances uh, where hams get into, oh, it's just like being bad neighbors. And I know of one ham who lost his license because he got into a contest with some other ham radio operator and it ended up in the FCC's hams. Fortunately, after a period of time, he was able to regain his license. but. Uh, it can happen. This is a hobby. You will get interference. It just happens. Now, some of this interference is completely unintended. Uh, one common example is something called intermod on repeaters. You put up a repeater and it receives on a certain frequency. It is possible because of the laws of physics that someone transmitting on a nearby frequency can, especially when there's an antenna where an element's loose or something like that, will create some energy on the repeater's input. It'll sound really just like noise. Um, if it's just a carrier operated uh, repeat, uh, relay in there, uh, then it will cause the repeater to transmit. This is why most repeaters have tones. They're looking not only for an RF input, but also a tone in it that's when they'll turn on the transmitter and it's to protect them from intermod. Now a great way to get yourself in deep trouble and by deep trouble I mean with the law and with the FCC is to willfully interfere with another station. We all accidentally interfere like I did today on 17 meters. That happens. I moved to another frequency. Now uh, Sometimes, once in a while, you may find yourself the target of interference. Work with your local club. If it's during a period of time where you were trying to pass emergency traffic, work with the local law enforcement authorities. And if necessary, work with the FCC. Ham Radio uh, has a long tradition of being self-policing. So there are people uh, who are members of the ARRL, who are called official observers, and they can listen to it, validate that that uh, willful interference is coming, and take the necessary actions. So the key thing is here is don't, don't interfere with someone else willfully. Ways that you might do that would be to transmit on top of their frequency in such a way as to capture the repeater. Uh, or if you're on HF to deliberately transmit right on top of the frequency or say something stupid and meaningless to jam it. Uh, just don't ever, ever do that. It's not only ungentlemanly, it's against the law. Uh, if you receive this kind of interference, don't rise to the bait. Do not acknowledge the interfering station because that just makes them want to do it more. Uh, carry on if you can. If you can't, uh, then move to another frequency. Uh, if it is repetitive, get with the official observers. But whatever, don't get yourself into a shouting match on the air with a, uh, someone who's giving you willful interference. Remember, you have something to lose. The other guy doesn't care. He has nothing to lose. And so you can't win. You simply can't win. Uh, so don't do that. Now, let me talk about a kind of interference that you're going to run into on the 80 meter band when you become general. I'm just warning you about this. There are things called nets where people get together on the air at an appointed time. For example, the Montrose Amateur Radio Club has a net on two meters every Sunday evening at 7 o'clock.
And so everybody gathers, there's a net control station and so on. But the people who are doing this control the repeater, that's their right to have that net. You can have your own net on there too. If you want some regularity out of it, you ought to talk to the person who's in charge of that repeater uh, about doing that. Uh, if it's not so important, just go ahead and do it. When you get on the HF bands, the problem is that your signal doesn't stay in your backyard. It can go across the country, even into foreign countries. And what happens is you get good old boys who have been on one frequency for forever and they think they own the frequency. They do not. But it does no good to challenge them. And in the evening, especially uh, weekend evenings, you'll find that 80 meters is wall-to-wall -wall nets. So there's no place for you to go call CQ. But what you can do is wait for a moment where two people are talking or something like that and just push the talk, KE0OG, that's all you gotta say. Now if they're nice, what they'll do is, uh, I heard somebody breaking into the net, KE0OG, come on, this is so-and-so, uh, W9 good old boy and you can join the net and many nets are very inclusive of uh, other people so that's a great way to you know drop into a net for 15 minutes you can get a signal report from them you find out how your audio is sounding you may have something you might want to add uh, when you're uh, talking to these people and you may end up being a regular in the net who knows you may have to try several nets before that happens but don't give up if there's a lot of nets on 80, don't call CQ because you're sure to be on top of somebody's net because they're about every 2.5 kilohertz up and down the band. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.